everyone! Welcome to week 29 of my series Paint and Meditate, the painting challenge where I use the Color Cube by Sarah Renee Clark and Bible verses turned in from all of you to restrict my color palette and to be the inspiration behind the painting. And today's colors... Forest green, magenta, blood orange, purple, and black. And today's Bible verse, 2 Chronicles 7.14. Let's get painting. With the new song en route to be released and the commission painting completed, it felt so good to finally get back in the flow of the weekly paint and meditate routine. And what a great color combo in scripture to dive back in with. Let's go ahead and read our verse. 2 Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. In my prayer and study time, I got this image of the painting split by this contrast between a kind of ashy, dark landscape versus a colorful and vibrant one, and right at the center of the two sides, a person praying. I decided to use orange for my wash layer, and then got in with a white charcoal pencil to sketch in the design. For the landscape, I first thought I'd have a meadow or green pasture kind of feel, but the more I looked at the colors, I got the impression to instead paint a desert scene. Oftentimes, people forget just how much abundant life exists in the desert, both physically and metaphorically. <laughs> and growing up in the desert, I naturally felt a little more connected to that idea as well. Using the black paint, I started with the left side of the painting. I first outlined the markings from my sketch and then began to fill in the full landscape. I had to be mindful of what shades of black would go where so that it didn't turn into a giant dark blob. I had more of a gray color for the overall landscape, saving the darkest black for the outlines of the plants and mountains. It was important to get the shading right on the mountains as well to keep them distinct and show that there were layers of mountains going beyond the horizon. For the plants, I wanted to show this idea of a broken land. So I had saguaros that had fallen down, a tree stump, and dried up bushes and other desert plants. I wanted it to really feel desolate. After years and years of work, the temple Solomon set out to have built for the Lord had finally been completed. In chapter 6, all the people are gathered as the Ark of the Covenant is brought to the temple. Solomon blesses the people and then goes into a prayer dedicating this house to the Lord and imploring God's steadfast love that if they turn and repent and pray to God, that he would be faithful to restore them. As they worship, fire comes down from heaven and the glory of the Lord fills the temple. And then they have a big seven day feast. After all of this, the Lord appeared to Solomon at night, saying he had heard his prayer, and God made a covenant with him that he would be faithful to bless and care for the nation when they act in obedience to his word, but if not, that they would experience devastation to their land and this temple would be destroyed. In the midst of these words comes our verse from today, which reflects God's eagerness to forgive his people. If my people humble themselves and pray and seek my face, these actions come from a place of a genuine change of heart. This verse shows that both Solomon and God knew the people would go astray, as all of us do. And while it would be just for God to decree punishment, his greater desire is to bless his people and maintain his relationship with them. If they ask for forgiveness and show they too want to mend this relationship with him, he is quick to forgive, showing mercy and restoring that which has been fractured. Once I was happy with the left side, I started preparing the vibrant side of the painting. I started out with the mountains, switching between the different tints of the blood orange. I used the darkest shade to transition from the black paint to the colorful side. As I was working on this, I got the idea to add a sunset. Now while yellow is not explicitly listed on this color cube card, there is a little bit of yellow showing in the flowers on the example picture. So I took the liberty to mix in a little with the blood orange to create that warm glow of the sun between the mountainscape. Then using the purple, magenta, and orange, I layered and blended until I was happy with the sky. 
Moving on to filling in the foreground, I blended with different shading and highlights of the blood orange, let it dry, and then began to add the plant life. Finally getting to use the forest green color, I added all kinds of desert plant life in full bloom. I always love when I'm on a road trip in my own state and I see all the saguaros filling the mountainsides, so I wanted to emulate that here. I added lots of little bushes and desert flowers as well, much like how it looks after a soaking spring rain. This covenant made with the people during that time of the temple's dedication would one day be expressed at an even greater level through the act of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins. In the same way today, all of us miss the mark of true goodness and sin against each other and above all God. But even though because of this we rightly deserve the consequences of our sin, God is not satisfied with that, again desiring the opportunity to forgive us rather than leave us to face death. For this reason, he sent his son to be the bridge to a healed relationship with God and eternal life. If we would humble ourselves, repenting and seeking God wholeheartedly, he is just and faithful to forgive us our sins and restore us spiritually, in turn transforming our day-to-day -day lives. If you'd like to see me paint one of your favorite Bible verses or passages, be sure to drop it in the comments below, and I'll add it to the drawing bowl for a future video. It's important to note that the terms of this covenant in 2 Chronicles 7 are not exactly the same as the new covenant that came forth in Christ. This verse doesn't mean that everything in our life is going to be perfect and that God will remove all sufferings and trials when we turn to him. In fact, Jesus warns us in quite the opposite way. It also differs in that our salvation is not dependent on us living a perfect life and doing all the right things. Naturally, our love for Christ begins to motivate us to live rightly. But following the historical documentation in the Chronicles and 1st and 2nd Kings, we clearly see that it is impossible for mankind to keep our end of the deal with God. This is why Jesus came. It is by his finished work we place our faith in what he has done and receive true salvation of the soul. The last piece of the puzzle would be to paint the person praying. There's something both so humbling and beautiful about kneeling before the Lord in prayer. Because of that, I wanted this person to be kneeling and with their arms open and out in front of them, in both a place of surrender, offering their heart to the Lord, as well as a posture to receive the forgiveness and love of God. Despite the numerous times we stray from the Lord, when we authentically come before him, imperfect and in the midst of our messiness, he does not tire of being merciful towards us. It makes me think of Isaiah 30, 18, which says the Lord longs to be gracious to us and to show us compassion. So when we find ourselves in a place of defeat or realizing we have unrepented sin in our lives, rather than listen to the voice of condemnation, shame, and guilt that the devil will try to lay on us, we can hold to the truth that if we sincerely repent of our actions, God is ready and eager to forgive us and help us to grow and walk in a life of freedom and joy indescribable. Our inner world restored from ashes to abundant life. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and for more creative content that helps cultivate closeness with God, check out these next. Thank you for watching. This has been KO, here with you to create eternal perspective.